laugh. Congruent triangles notes. So the name of this whole unit is congruent triangles. But we started out last week just showing y'all a lot of theorems about triangles. Y'all caught on to that pretty well. Uh, this part here is important today, especially because of the stuff we got to do next. Y'all need to learn how to write congruency statements for triangles and understand what corresponding parts of triangles are and how they work. So that's what you're going to get today. Congruent triangles, triangles with the same shape and size. I consider congruent triangles. This means all corresponding parts, the angles and the sides are congruent. All the corresponding angles are congruent, all the corresponding sides are congruent to each other. When triangles are congruent, we can write a congruency statement. They've written one to the right for you, right there. A congruency statement has to be written so that you show congruence even in the statement. I should be able to, I don't even need to see these triangles. I should be able to read this statement right here and understand what angles are congruent to each other and what sides are congruent to each other just based off the way they wrote it. And look at the way they wrote the first one. They called the first one tri uh, triangle ABC. And then they said it was congruent to triangle DEF. That's the only way they could name that based on the way they marked those two triangles. They marked the, uh, which sides were congruent to each other and they marked which angles were congruent to each other. Based off the way they marked those two triangles, the only way we could write that congruency statement if we're going to start with ABC. An important part for you to understand is the start doesn't matter. It's the finish that matters. You can start whichever way you want. But based on the way you start naming one triangle, you have to name the other one the other the same way. For example, they named this first one ABC. They had to name the second one DEF based off the way they are marked. Now, I just said a lot, but it was, should have been able to be processed. Let's see if you did process it. Irvin, I'm going to name my first triangle. I'm going I'm to switch it up. I'm going to name my first triangle BCA. What would you have to name your second triangle if I call the first one BCA? A little louder? EFD. EFD. I can go another route to it, don't really matter. <clears throat> I call the first triangle ACB if I wanted to. If I call it ACB, Faith, what do I have to call the second one? DFE. These are congruency statements. They have to match up. A uh, valid congruency statement must match all corresponding angles and sides. That's what we just did. And this next part, CPCTC. You're going to hear me say this a lot, especially at the end of this week. What is it? CPCTC is a statement about corresponding parts. It means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. If they tell you a triangle is congruent to a triangle, after that you can make a CPCT statement. You can talk about corresponding parts. So basically up here, since I know triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, I can make a CPC statement that says, I, I, and I can be sure about it. I can say angle B is congruent to angle E. I know that for a fact, since I know the triangles are congruent. That's a CPCT statement. Another one would be uh, side AB is congruent to side ED or DE. I know that because I know the triangles are congruent. If that's the case, I can make that CPCT statement. I'm getting good at saying it. It's not easy to say. Uh, so if we know two triangles are congruent, 
then we know that every pair of corresponding parts are also congruent. That is CPCTC. Uh, list all congruent angles and sides given the congruency statements. Let me start you out down here. Number one, <coughs> so they're telling me triangle JKL is congruent to triangle PQR. If that's the case, I can tell them what all angles are congruent to each other and what all uh, sides are congruent to each other. I can make all those CPCTC statements. First one I can make, I can say angle J is congruent to angle P. I know that just based on looking at the statement. I can also say angle K is congruent to angle Q. I can also say angle L is congruent to angle R. Then after that, I saw my angles, <coughs> my sides. I can say side JK is congruent to side PQ. I can say side KL is congruent to side QR. Then I can say side JL is congruent to side PR. Don't try to go ahead of me on this. I know some of y'all attempted to. I'm not about to write this other stuff the same way on the other side. So, don't go ahead of me. At the bottom down here, it says write another valid congruency statement. What they're saying, they're saying switch it up. And we can. Uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, excuse me. If I name the first uh, triangle, if I switch it up, if I name it KLJ, <clears throat> what would you have to name the second triangle then? Yeah, QRP. Alright, switching over to number two. It says triangle WXY is congruent to triangle EFG. On triangle two, Chris, angle X will be congruent to angle what? A little louder, I can't hear you, bro. Angle F, good. Sophia, angle Y will be congruent. Thank you, man. Beyonce, angle W. Angle what? Some of you said E the bell room. But yeah. <coughs> angle E. Aiden. Segment or side YW will be congruent to what? GE. Reese. XW will be congruent. F E yeah. Maybe a Y X will be congruent. G F Thank you. And then Kevin I'm talking to Kevin only and not Rose. Say if I call a triangle W, I mean Y, W, X, Y, W, X. Say if I switch the congruency statement of that. Y, W, X.
Yes, triangle G E F. Good. Roll along decent on the front. Given triangle KPM is congruent to triangle AYC. Uh, complete each of the following statements. <clears throat> first thing I want y'all to do on these, since they're telling, be quiet, man. First thing I want you to do is go through and mark your triangles. It's going to make life a lot easier, and you can. What I mean by marking your triangles is the same way they marked theirs on the front up here. They marked all their congruent angles and then they marked all their congruent sides. These are how you correctly mark triangles based on what they call congruent. So let's go through and do it ourselves. <clears throat> this first one, number three, just reading the statement. I'm not even looking over here. I don't care about what they're asking. Reading the statement, I know angle K is congruent to what? Angle K is congruent to angle A. So angle K and A, I'm going to put one angle marking. Hold on. pausing no more. I'm just going to take the L from here on out. <coughs> uh, angle P is congruent to angle Y. That's two markings. I'm marking that one with two markings on each one to distinguish it from angle K and A. And then M is congruent to C. I'm doing three on that one. And then after that, the sides. KP is congruent to AY. Then PM is congruent to YC. And then KM is congruent to AC. Doing that first makes life a lot easier. Some of y'all ain't going to do it, though, because y'all want to do whatever y'all want to do. But it's up to you. <clears throat> After that, let's blast through. We're just going to start us off. KM is congruent to what? Yeah. <clears throat> then angle Y, Reese. Angle P. And then Reese, they call, it said triangle MPK. CY what? Yeah, triangle CYA. Good. Irving. CY. Side CY, huh? Side C Y Irving. Angle K Irving. Angle K, bro. It's on your sheet. That fool said, What about it? Don't worry about it, Irvin. Thank you. Thank you for the services, man. Beyonce. Triangle YAC. PKM. Yes. Oh, you might as well finish this off. Uh, segment PK. Beyonce. Yeah. And then the last one says angle ACY. A, bit, a little bit loud, I can't hear you. Still can't hear you, but there it is. Thank you. Yes, angle KMP. <coughs> Sliding on. 
getting a little bit more difficult each time. Uh, given triangle STW, it's congruent triangle BFN. Find each measure, missing measure. On this one, I will probably do the same thing. And then on the last one first, I will mark my stuff congruent. <coughs> so I will go through based off the uh, angle. So it just makes life easy, I'm telling you. Uh, angle S is congruent to angle B. Then angle T is congruent to angle F. Then after that, angle W is congruent to angle N. And then the sides, ST congruent to BF, TW is congruent to FN, <coughs> and then SW is congruent to BN. Uh, A, there's a typo there. That shouldn't say B, it should say B N. Had an N in after that. Assassin for B N. Alright, will you help me flow through yet? Alright. Hold on, I got something else for you. Well, no, I don't. Go ahead, it's fine. B N. No, we said they're saying BN. They want to know what side is congruent to BN. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They want to know the measures. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, missing measures. Nine, nine centimeters. Yeah, good. I'm tripping. Uh, angle W. Angle W, bro. 82 degrees. Yeah, it's, it's values on this one. Cause they ain't got a congruent sign. <coughs> Alright, uh, TW. Let me zoom out. <coughs> you said TW what? 14. Whenever I answer something, I fill it into on the triangle, it helps. Uh, angle B. Seven degrees. Uh, BF. Seventeen. <clears throat> and then angle F. I got something else for you, though. Hmm? What you just said? Hmm? Hmm? Mm -mm. Oh, I lied. I'm thinking about another problem. You're right. Tell me how you got it. I'm talking to you. I said I lied. I'm thinking about another problem. You got it, right? Tell me how you got it. Yeah, y'all should understand. Ask you for angle F. As I told you, label as you go to. By doing the other ones, you you know angle B was congruent to angle F, so you move that over here. 67 degrees, you got 82 degrees, 67 degrees. You just need angle F. Now you can do triangle angle sum. You should know all three of those add up to 180. So you go 180 minus 67 minus 82. And like he said, 31 degrees. So angle F equals 31 degrees. Um, after that.
Number five, given triangle GHJ is congruent to triangle XYZ, find each missing measure. Oh, I guess I need a slide now. <coughs> On this one, I will label still two, but I need you to, uh, they kind of already label for you a little bit there. On the first triangle, GHJ, they label GH and HJ the same. What does that mean for this triangle? Let me say, classify this triangle. Here you go. By its sides. Thank you. This is an isosceles triangle. You should be able to see that. <coughs> Since it's isosceles, uh, you should know things about it or about both of these. Uh, if those sides, GH and HJ, are congruent, Earl, do you know what angles would be congruent to each other in that one triangle? No, 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 no. In that single triangle here, GHJ, what angles would be congruent since it's isosceles? This is, y'all can look at it and see. This ain't no trick. In this triangle, what two angles look congruent? H and J. You think, you think, what? Angles, bro. Angles. Angles. Y'all stop telling me silly stuff. Okay, Vince and you're up because they, they don't want to step up. What? G and J are congruent. I did not hear that, bro. I'm not focused on your voice and stuff. Y'all y'all should be able to see that. What what's the issue? Y'all should know that those two angles are congruent. Yeah, they look the same. I don't know. I told you, but y'all gotta develop the vision, man. Nah. This third angle, y'all should know that's different up here. So you're gonna mark that differently. I'm just doing it so we can mark this correctly. You can't mark this the same way we mark the other ones because it's isosceles. Two of the angles are the same. I need to understand that because two of the sides are the same. Same thing on the other triangle. <clears throat> two sides are the same here and here. These two angles are the same. This angle up here would be different, but it will be congruent to our other angle and our other one. And also, the bottom side is the same as this side over here on this one. It needs to be marked correctly. Oh, boy. All righty. Let's see it. Let him be. Chris, let's ride. <coughs> GJ. Low ladder. 18 feet. Measure of angle H. You man, I ain't changed. Thirty-eight degrees. X Y. Gotta speak louder for me, Chris. Measure of angle Z. I expect there to be a pause here. Somebody might have to help you out. I don't know if you know. And it can't be Vincent. Miss Johnson. Or Miss Aaron. Either one of y'all know how to find the angle Z. Okay. Exactly. So she said the 180 minus 38. That's gonna give you what? 142. No. 
<laughs> and then after that, when Miss Apple's trying to help y'all understand, she did that because these two angles down here are the same. So we know that we can take 38 from 180 and whatever's left over will be between these two angles. And like she said, you need to divide by two because it's two angles. They're congruent to each other. All you got to do is split that number in half to get what those two angles will equal, which is what now? 71 degrees. I've shown y'all this about three or four times now. At some point, I'm assuming y'all gonna catch on to it. If not, I guess you're just gonna get them wrong on the test. <clears throat> so angle Z is 71 degrees. I guess you're gonna pick back up now, Chris. You ain't done yet. <clears throat> ZY, Chris. I'm sorry? 27. Angle J? 71 degrees. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Alright. Sliding on. Uh, given. Triangle PHS is congruent to triangle CNF. Find each missing measure. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do first. Marking. It'll help. statement and marking and be inquired about it because you should understand what I'm doing now. Alright, my triangles are marked up. Had a good nap, Mr. So on this one, we want to solve for X, Y, and Z. They got expressions on both triangles in certain spots. You got to figure it out for yourself. I guess this is the one we'll recruit Vincent for. Vincent. First one they want me to find is X. Uh, only X thing I see is on angle H. They got 6X minus 29. Make sure you're paying attention. You got 6X minus 29 on angle H. What would you do, sir? Good. He says 6x minus 29 equals 115. Uh -huh. Yeah, it probably is. I don't care about the answer. Y'all saw. Make sure y'all get 24. Solve it. <clears throat> Look like we do. Uh, Vincent, back to you. Uh, the next one, they want to solve for Y. So, sound like most people sound like say X was 24, which is good. They want us to solve for Y now. <coughs> I agree with what you're saying, but I'm confused. Huh? Oh, no, nah, we can do Y first. It don't matter. Uh... So the equation he said, y'all, was 3y minus 1 equals 29. Problem is, where you get 29 from? Where you got 29 from, Reese? How you did that?
I can let Vincent explain it since he said it. Vincent, where you get 29 from, man? I don't understand. Or how you get 115? What's up? What's 115? Which triangle are you using to figure all this out? Let me ask you that. Yeah. So let me help y'all out. Y'all need to understand. F is congruent to S. You need to find S to find S. Uh, you got 36 over here already. Angle H. You should know that angle H is congruent to angle N. So 115 right here. And this is where they're coming from. They're saying 36 plus 115 gives them whatever. And they subtract that from 180. So you can do 180 minus 36 minus 115. Equals, should equal 29 if that's what they're saying. <clears throat> so that's where you get 29 from. And you know angle F and angle S are the same. So your equation would be 3Y minus 1 equals 29. Yeah, I believe you. I don't care about the answer. That's good. Vincent, I'm going to let you finish this one now. Yeah. And the last equation should be easy for y'all to write because everything is there already. You just got to match up C and P. You got 4Z minus 32 equals 36. My bad. And then y'all need to solve for Z. Hmm? Yeah. Like I was telling the kids in the other class, man, um, if you ever want to wonder what you're going to see on the test, on each of the notes that we give y'all, I would go to the last one or two questions. That's what you're going to be tested on. All that other stuff is just to help build you to this point. Like all this stuff up here, this is cute and all, but this is just to help you get to this point around here where you can understand enough to be able to solve equations. So, if you ever want to wonder what you're going to see on the test, you're going to see from our notes, mainly the last couple questions that we do in our notes, specifically on this one, six and seven, stuff like this. This is what you're going to be tested on. <coughs> All right, sliding on. Last one, number seven. If triangle DEF is congruent to triangle JKL, DE is equal to 18, EF is equal to 23, DF is equal to 9X minus 23, JL is equal to 7X minus 11, JK is equal to 3Y minus 21. Find the values of X and Y. The first and best thing you can do for yourself on this is draw out two triangles. They don't have to be huge, just got to be big enough for you to label them. Some people already figured this out because I've seen some of y'all notes. They're going to be congruent triangles, so try to make them look even. Mine don't, but whatever. It's all good. You get the process. <coughs> D, E, F. I always label mine like this, but you can label yours however you want. It's when you mark them that you better be right. The J, K, L. And then from there, before I even put any numbers or anything on here, I'm going to go through and mark my stuff up. Congruent, congruent, congruent. No, DE is congruent to JK. EF will be congruent to KL. And DF will be congruent to JL. <coughs> I was doing all my congruency markings. So when I label, I know what goes with what. Now I'm about to label. 
DE was equal to 18. EF was 23. DF, 9X minus 23. JL, 7X minus 11. And JK, 3Y minus 21. Faith, how do I solve for X? Good. 9x minus 23 equals 7x minus 11. That's the equation you want to write to solve for x. Let me go ahead and give you the one for y too, so I won't have to wait on you to solve. Ms. Johnson, what equation would you write to solve for y? X and Y. I don't know. I can't remember. 